One of the most commonly observed bottlenecks in the LLM RAG apps is the weak retriever. The retriever that fails to retrieve relevant documents to answer user queries. Correcting the retriever stage can immediately boost the performance of the RAG app. That's why in this video, I am going to introduce you to one simple advanced RAG technique that can improve your RAG app's performance with a few changes. If you stick to the video until the end, then you will also have a coding knowledge to implement this technique for your project. So the advanced rec technique that we are going to implement later in the video is query expansion. Query expansion as the concept name suggests expands the actual user query so that this modified query can retrieve more relevant documents. There are two different ways to implement the concept. First is generating an answer and second one is generating similar queries. Given a query, the query expansion first zero shot prompts an instruction tuned LLM to generate a fake answer to the user query. Then the original query is modified to include the fake answer. This modified query can then be used to search for matching documents in the vector store. The generated answer can help capture more keywords commonly found in an answer, hence, more relevant documents. Given a query, the query expansion first zero shot prompts an instruction tuned LLM to generate queries similar to the user query, which captures essential keywords and textual patterns. Then the original query along with this generated queries is used to search for matching documents in the vector store. This retrieved documents can then be used in a downstream pipeline like RAG. Alright, so now that I have explained the theory behind the concept, let's go ahead and see it in action. Alright, so I have kept the total code for this tutorial in this Jupyter Notebook and I will include a GitHub link to it into the description so you can download and follow along. At the beginning of the notebook, I have highlighted the important sections of this tutorial. So in the first section, we will load the data set. For this tutorial, I have decided to use the Form 10K report filed by Apple for the year 2023. Form 10K is a financial performance report filed by a publicly traded company to Securities and Exchange Commission. It's a simple 80 page PDF report that we will use as dataset for our tutorial. After loading the PDF report, we will split the data into the text chunks so we can load them to the vector store. In the second section, we will load the dataset or the text chunks that we created in the first section into the vector store. For this tutorial, I have decided to use the Chroma DB vector store. After loading the dataset to the vector store, we will also visualize the text chunks by projecting them onto the lower dimension. In the third section, we query our vector store to search for the relevant document without any rag trick. We use the simple plain user query to search for the relevant document. And after retrieving the relevant documents, we visualize the dataset, original query and retrieve documents by projecting their embeddings onto the lower dimension. In the fourth section, I introduce query expansion algorithm using generated answer approach to retrieve relevant documents. After retrieving relevant documents using this approach, we will visualize the original query, the modified query and the retrieved documents by projecting their embeddings onto the lower dimension. In the fifth section, I introduce query expansion algorithm using generated queries approach to retrieve relevant documents. And after retrieving relevant documents using this approach, we again visualize the original queries, the generated queries and the retrieved documents by projecting embeddings on the lower dimension. In the sixth and the last section of this tutorial, we build a simple RAG app to check the performance of retrieved documents from the third, fourth and the fifth sections. We check how the retrieved documents are doing at answering the user query. So next I have highlighted the Python libraries that we will need for this tutorial. So first of all, you will need to install a Grok Python library and it will be used to access the LLM to Grok API. Next is the Langchain. So you will need to install Langchain as well and Chroma DB will be our vector store. So in the first cell, I have loaded the environment variable. So I have kept the Grok API key in the .env file, which I have kept in the current directory, the same one as this Jupyter node. 
Then I have imported the chroma DB and printed the version that I have used in this tutorial. And then in the next cell, I have created a grok client. So from grok, you need to import a grok class and then you can create an instance of it by providing the API key. So this client object will be used to access the various LLMs which are available through grok API. And in order to create a grok API, you will need to log into console.grok.com and create an API key over there. Then you will be able to access LLMs through Grok API. For this tutorial, as I said earlier, we will use Llama 3.1 70 billion versatile version. So in the first section, we are loading our data set. And as I said, we will use the form 10K report of Apple, which was filed for the year 2023. And it's available as PDF file. You can easily download the file from the internet. It will be publicly available. But I will also include it into the GitHub repository so you can follow along. For reading the file, we are using this Python library PyPDF. So first of all, you need to import PDF reader from that Python library. Create an instance of reader with the file name and then you can simply call the pages object on it to read the context or the text of those pages. So those pages are available over here in this pages variable. So pages is a list of strings and each individual string is text of the particular page. So over here I am displaying the zeroth page or the first page, the content of the first page. So next after loading the PDF file, we are splitting it further into the text chunks because the one page can have a lot of text. So for that we are using a recursive character text splitter class which is available from Langchain. And we will use this uh, class to split our PDF file content into the chunks of size 1000 character. So I have created an instance of that class and I have set chunk size of 1000. So in each text chunk, it will cap the 1000 character, around 1000 character. And there will be even an overlap, overlap of around 25 characters for chunks. So after creating an instance, we can call a method split text on it. And over there, we need to provide the total text. So I have combined the total text of all the pages and provided it over here to this method split text. And it will split the total text of the PDF documents into the chunks. So after splitting, there are 323 text chunks. So our original 80 pages PDF report, the text of that 80 pages PDF report is now 323 text chunks. And over here, I have displayed a sample text chunk. So after splitting the document into the text chunks, in the second section, we will load this text chunks into the vector store. And as I said earlier, for this tutorial, we will use a ChromaDB vector store. So in order to interact with the ChromaDB vector store, first of all, we need to create an instance of a persistent client. So this client will be used to interact with the ChromaDB. And as the client is persistent client, so the data will be persisted to disk. Over here, I have provided a path to Apple 10K. So this will create a folder 10K inside of which there will be a SQLite DB file where the collection or the documents will be stored. So in the next cell, uh, on the next line, I have created an instance of embedding function. So this is actually an LLM that we will use to generate embeddings of our text chunks. And for this tutorial, we are using this uh, distill robot v1. And that uh, particular LLM is available through this uh, Python library sentence transformer. So we can create an instance of this uh, sentence transfer embedding function. And over there, we can provide the name of the LLM that we want to use to generate embeddings for our text document. And in Chroma, this uh, text chunks are stored in collection. So collection has a text chunks and their embeddings. All of that is stored inside of this collection. Now, if you don't have a background with uh, Chroma DB, I would suggest that you check out our tutorial on Chroma DB, where I have covered the Chroma DB in detail. So using the Chroma DB client, client, we create a collection. So we can use the create collection method for that. Where we need to provide the name of the collection. You can provide metadata. It's optional. Embedding function is the LLM that we are going to use to create embeddings. So this distill Roberta will be used to create embeddings. And get or create is set to true. So if this uh, 
particular collection already exists in our vector store apple 10k because we have created persistent client or persistent vector store if it already exists then it will retrieve the existing one otherwise it will create a new one so after creating a collection we can add the text chunk to collection by simply calling the add method on it and over there there is a parameter documents where we are providing the text chunks and we also need to provide ids so i am simply providing the indexes of the documents so split 0 split 1 and so on this will be used as id and as you can see from the collection.count call there are 323 documents which are there in the collection because we had 323 text chunks so next i am visualizing the text chunks that we added to our vector store by projecting them onto the lower dimension so let me show you the chart so this is the scatter chart of the text chunks so 323 text chunks that we added so we are retrieving their embeddings and then we are then projecting them to the lower dimension two dimension and then we are plotting them as a scatter chart this will be useful later on when we retrieve the relevant documents so on this particular scatter chart we will plot the projection of the query and the retrieve documents so we can check whether the retrieve documents are the one which are in the neighborhood of the query or not so that's why this visualization will be useful later on so for creating the visualization first of all i am retrieving the embeddings of all the chunks from our collection and then i have created an instance of umap the so umap is a dimensionality reduction algorithm that we will use to project the data from higher dimension to two dimension and i am calling the fit method on it with the embeddings so all the embeddings and next i have created this uh, function so this function takes as input this umap projector the trained instance of umap and the embeddings for which you want the lower dimension projection and then i am calling this project embeddings as you can see with the umap projector and embeddings so this is the embeddings of the total data set and that's the projected data set embeddings and that's we are visualizing over here as a scatter chart now in our case as i said we used this uh, distill roberta llm to generate embeddings and it generates an embedding of size 768 and that 768 dimension embedding will be projected to two dimension embedding using umap and then we will create this visualization in the third section we are querying our vector store to retrieve relevant documents for the given input user query and for this section we are not using any advanced rec trick so the performance of the retrieve documents in this section will be compared against the performance of the documents retrieved when we use the query expansion so this is the query that we will use for all the sections and the query is what are the risk factors for the company so what are the risk factors for apple in this case and to query the collection or to search for the matching documents and retrieve them we can use this method query over there we can provide the input query and i have asked the to retrieve five relevant documents for this case and the re result from that is a dictionary called to that method and it has uh, this uh, attributes or this keys available and i am maintaining the list of retrieve documents as you can see in this variable retrieve documents one and this will be later on useful so for the given input query what are the risk factors for the company these are the retrieve five documents which i have printed over here and as you can see the first one seems to be about risk second one also some somewhat seems to be relevant and so on so these are the documents that are and the last one also seems to be the relevant one because it's talking about business risk so these are the relevant documents retrieved without any rack trick so in this section i am visualizing the query embeddings and the retrieve documents embeddings on the data set embeddings which we plotted earlier so if you remember earlier we plotted this uh, gray dots which represents the text chunks that are there in our collection or our vector store and this red dot is the projected embedding for our input user query and these crosses of green colors are the retrieve documents so their embedding is projected on two dimension and that's plotted over here 
And as you can see from the response, the query is over here and the retrieve document seems to be far away. Ideally, the document should be over here from the neighborhood. So it seems that our default retriever is not doing a good job. And here is the code where I'm first of all retrieving the embeddings of the documents, retrieve documents file. Then using the distill robot uh, function, I am creating the embedding of the query. And then using project embeddings, I am projecting both the query embedding and the retrieve document embeddings onto the lower dimension using UMAP projector. So now this will be the two dimensional embeddings. And then I am plotting the original data set, the query embeddings and the retrieve documents embedding. All right, so in this fourth section, I have introduced the query expansion algorithm with generated answer approach. And for that one, I have created this function generate answer. So this uh, generate answer function takes as input user query and generates a fake answer, which is generally found in the answer for that particular query. And for that, we are using a model Llama 3.170 billion. And this is the standard message format. So list of messages. And the first one is the system message. And the system message is that you are a helpful expert financial research assistant. Provide an example answer to given input user query that might be found in a document like an annual report. So you are instructing LLM to generate a sample answer for the input user query. And then we are calling the Grok API with this LLM to retrieve the response. So this is the generated answer for our input user query. So if you remember our query was what are the risk factors for the company Apple and this is the answer generated. So it has generated these are risk factors, economic and market risk, competition and market share risk. And so this risk are generally found in the answer. So others company might be facing this risk as well. So now that we have answer, we will modify our query. So we will create a joint query where we have the original query and the generated answer. So as you can see, this is the original query that what are the risk factors for the company? So for Apple in our case, and the answer is appended as well. And now to retrieve the relevant documents, we will use this joint query to retrieve relevant documents. So as you can see, again, I am calling collection.query to retrieve relevant documents. And this time with joint query, I, will reserve, I have retrieved the five documents. And those retrieved documents are stored in this variable, retrieve documents two. So from results of document, they are over there. And then I am also printing the retrieve documents. So as you can see, these are the five retrieve documents. But let's go ahead and visualize them. So we will get the better idea. So in this section, we are visualizing our data set along with the original query, the new query and the retrieve documents. And as you can see from the visualization, the original query, the red one is over here. And the new joint query is again quite near to that original query. And this time, if you notice the retrieve documents, two are far, but the three are near or in the neighborhood of the query, the original query and the joint query as well. And if you remember last time when we retrieved the relevant documents, they were far away from our original query. So it seems that the query expansion with the generated answer has done a better job at retrieving the relevant documents. At least from this visualization, it appears that it has done a quite a good job at retrieving relevant documents. So let's go ahead and try the another approach of query expansion, which is to generate other similar queries to our input user queries. And for that, again, I have created this sample function named generate queries. And this function takes as input user query and returns the content or the string, which will have the list of uh, generated queries by the input LLM. And again, we are using Llama 3.1 with the 70 billion model version and the messages are again the standard message format. So first one is the system message and over here the system message is that uh, you are a helpful expert financial research assistant. Your users are asking questions about an annual report. Suggest up to five additional related questions to help them find the information they need. So this line 
is asking the LLM to generate the questions which are similar to the user question and for the provided input user questions and suggest only short questions without compound sentences and suggest a variety of questions that cover different aspects of the topic. We are asking it to cover uh, different questions, so different versions of the same question, so we can target more keywords. Make sure they are complete questions and that they are related to the original questions. Yeah, so they should be related to the original question and it should not divert from the original topic of the user query. Output one question per line and do not add numbers to the question. And then next is the input user query. So then we are calling our grok API with client.chat.completions.create with the model name and the messages. And the response will be the list of questions generated by the LLM. So that's what I am doing over here. I am calling that particular function with our input query. Augmented queries are the list of queries that we got from that uh, particular call to the method. And as you can see, these are the queries returned by the LLM. So our original query was that uh, what are the risk factors for the company? And as you can see, these other questions said, what are the company's most significant risk factors? How does the company manage cyber security threats? Okay, so that can be one of the risk factors. Are there any pending lawsuits or regulatory issues? So yeah, that's also risk factors. What is the company's disaster recovery plan? Yeah, so that will come under the risk, uh, uh, the disaster risk that company faces. And how does the company assess and prioritize potential risk? Yeah, that can also talk about the risk. So these questions can help us retrieve relevant documents about risk. So in the next cell, I have created a queries variable where I have kept the original query and the augmented query. So this queries variable will have a total of six queries. And then we are retrieving the relevant documents uh, using this six queries. And we are asking it to retrieve five documents for queries. So for each query, five relevant documents will be retrieved. So this retrieve documents will have list and each entry will be the five documents, one for each query. So next line of code is a simple for loop, which is trying to remove the duplicate document. Because we have six queries in total, the original one and the five newly generated one. For each one, there will be five relevant documents. So six into five, there will be 30 documents and for some of them there will be overlapping documents so we need to remove duplicates and after removing duplicates as you can see we have 19 documents left from that total 30 retrieved so let's go ahead and visualize the result of this one as well visualize this so 19 relevant documents and see where they stands compared to the user input user query and the relevant queries that we generated so in this section we are again creating a projection of the embeddings. So the embeddings of the documents, of the unique documents, and the embeddings of the query, the original query, embeddings of the similar queries or the queries that were generated by LLMs for our input query. And then I am creating the projected embeddings for all of them, the query, the original query, the retrieved query, and the retrieved document. And then I am plotting them on our original scatter chart. So the gray ones are the text chunks of our original. And as you can see, the original query is the red dot. And all the generated queries are there near to our original queries. And this time, if you notice the retrieved document, the majority of the document retrieved this time are in the neighborhood of our query. So this performance is almost best of all. So if you if I show you the performance of the previous approach. As you can see, few were there far, the few documents retrieved using that approach were far from the query. And for the approach without any kind of trick, as you can see, all the documents were not in the neighborhood. So this approach, particular one, the query expansion using generated query is doing a quite a better job at retrieving relevant documents as majority of the documents that 
retrieve using this approach are in the neighborhood of the original queries and the generated queries. All right, so till now we only retrieved the relevant documents using various approaches and plotted them. In this section, I have built a simple RAG application which will answer user query based on those retrieved documents. So we want to see that how the query expansion with generated queries is doing, how query expansion is uh, with the generated answer is doing and how the normal approach without any advanced rec technique is doing. So we can compare those three approaches. So for that, I have created a simple rack function. This function takes as input the query and the retrieve documents. So we retrieve relevant documents in three different sections. Those will be passed on over here. The model again is a Lama 3. Point. So information is the context as you can see. So I am I am combining the content of all the retrieved documents. So that will be the context for our RAG app. And over here is the messages. So first one is a standard system message that you are an expert financial research assistant. Your users are asking questions about information contained in an annual report. You will be given the user's query and the relevant information from the annual report. Answer the user's question using only this information. So next is the user, the user role content. And as you can see there, we have a question, the user question. And this information is the relevant documents that we passed on over here. And if you notice, the system message was different for all our different functions when we are using generated queries and generated expansion. And yeah, so that the messages will be passed on to the Grok API to generate a response for the user query based on the relevant document. So first time I am calling the rack function with the query and the retrieve documents this time is retrieve documents one. So these are the retrieve documents from the third section. So let me take you to the top. So that are the retrieve documents from this section, query vector store, where we did not use any rec trick. We retrieve the relevant documents based on the plain input user query. And here is the response generated when we ask our RAG app to generate a response over input query based on those retrieved documents. And as you can see from the response, it's saying that unfortunately the provided information does not specifically mention how the company assesses and prioritizes the potential risk. So it seems that the normal retriever has almost failed to retrieve relevant documents. And if you remember from our visualization also, that was the case. So let's go ahead and try the RAG app with the retrieve document from the query expansion with the generated answer section. So again, we are calling the RAG function with the query and this time we are using retrieve documents too. So these are the retrieve documents from that uh, fourth section that the query expansion with generated answer. And as you can see, it did retrieve relevant documents. That's why we are able to see the risk highlighted over here. It has highlighted six risks, legal and regulatory compliance risk, business risk, economic risk, operational, reputational, environmental, social and governance risk. Yeah, so it has highlighted the risk. So compared to the Compared to the previous approach where we used a plain query to retrieve the relevant document, this approach with the query expansion with the generated answer has done a good job compared to that approach. So let's go ahead and see how the performance of the uh, query expansion with similar queries. And again, I am calling the rag function with our query and the retrieve documents are the unique document. If you remember, we had around 19 unique documents that we had retrieved and using that we have generated a response and as you can see this time this time it has generated even a more detailed response compared to the previous response of only query expansion with generated answer as you can see it has highlighted the potential risk and this time it included one extra point political and international risk so this point was not included last time if you notice the response from the last time so that one extra point is included and other than that there is also other details include, included regarding the risk that 
what the company also takes steps to mitigate this risk what steps company is taking to mitigate this so some amount of extra detail is also included in this approach query expansion with generated queries right so that's it for this tutorial feel free to explore the notebook make modification and let me know in the comment section if you have any doubt